the lead up to the PNP presidential elections in November 2020, along with the days that followed and the incidences and controversies that came out after Mark Golden was elected as the sixth president of the People's National Party, has made it quite evident, clear and lucid that there are a number of divisions in the People's National Party, and these divisions are expanding. They are even extending to a point where they are broader than they were a decade ago. There appears to be, however, a clear lack of due diligence, and I wonder who is irresponsible and who is responsible for all of these issues. Who should be checking on these things to ensure that the necessary checks and balances are in place so that the necessary procedures are being followed. It seems like there are several persons within the People's National Party that view themselves as a future Prime Minister of Jamaica and therefore they also believe that they should be the next leader of the PNP as well. Well, at this point, there is just one leader. Mark Golden, who was elected as the sixth president. They managed to work very hard to get out former opposition leader and president of the party, Dr. Peter Phillips, but it seems like they have not settled their minds with Mark Golden as yet, with some persons even being bold enough to say that they are giving him two years, and after two years, they will be challenging for the leadership of the PNP. So, of course, with all of these persons juggling to become future Prime Ministers of Jamaica and many wanting to dethrone Mark Golden as leader of the political organization, it makes you wonder who are the persons who are working towards ensuring that glory is restored to the People's National Party and that stability and unity remains the foremost and a parterized goal and mission of this noble political organization. Many have suggested that the lack of due diligence was first exposed during the by-election for St. Mary's Southeastern. The PNP nominated as its candidate Dr. Shane Alexis, who was not qualified to sit in the Jamaican parliament as he had foreign citizenship. Of course, currently, what was on the public's mind was Senator Norman Horn, and many thought that he might be a United States citizen, and later he confirmed this as well. But this means that if this were true when his name was submitted for him to be appointed and sworn in as a senator in the Jamaican parliament, it means that Norman Washington Horn was not duly qualified for a senatorial position in Jamaica's parliament. It was the same People's National Party that properly took Daryl Vaz and the late Shiny Robinson to court and had the court declare that they were not entitled to sit in the parliament of Jamaica as they held foreign citizenship. Having done that in 2007, one would expect that the People's National Party would exercise the same level of due diligence when selecting individuals to either be candidates for their elections or to the parliament or to be appointed to the senate. There was quite a blatant lack of due diligence in the case of the selection of Dr. Alexis as a candidate for election to parliament and the PNP should admit that they were reckless, careless and very irresponsible in not first ensuring that Dr. Alexis was not holding foreign citizenship. If it is also a fact that Senator Norman Horn is a United States citizen or that he holds a foreign citizenship, then the People's National Party is even more embarrassingly negligent and irresponsible and also quite reckless and careless with the matter of senatorial appointments to the Jamaican Parliament. 
this would be a second mistake and may be deliberate on someone's part because they did not first ensure that Horn was indeed fully qualified to sit in the parliament. Dr. Peter Phillips should have ensured that the persons whom he selected for appointment to the Senate were duly qualified, specifically that they are not holding foreign citizenship. The People's National Party should never have allowed such a catch to be given. Considering the legal campaign that they brought against Daryl Vaz and Shiny Robinson and two other JLP members in 2007. Mark Golden should also have ensured that he would have done the necessary checks before announcing that Peter Bunting was his selection to replace Norman Horn. So the carelessness and the recklessness continues on the side of the PNP. And Mark Golden is a legal expert and he should know that as an attorney, the necessary checks and balances are very important before making statements. Mark Golden, having had to turn up at King's House with Peter Bunting to be sworn in without first making a communication to check with Horn and to have had made it known that he had withdrawn his name, is reckless and a lack of due diligence as well on the part of the current president of the People's National Party and opposition leader of Jamaica. Mark Golden, who is the new PNP leader, Peter Bunting and Norman Horn are all within the same political organization. Therefore, why is it that they are not communicating? They all call themselves comrades and they have not been communicating at all. Comrades are usually friends. They should have some level of communication and civil activities between them. There should be some communication and frank and open discussions between the three. However, the events that have unfolded indicate otherwise. There is total disconnection, miscommunication or the lack of communication between these three gentlemen. To add to further confusion and controversy, Crawford has indirectly declared his readiness to lead the party. And of course, ultimately, his intention is to become Prime Minister of Jamaica. And he says that he will challenge for the leadership in 2023. He is merely given gold in two years and who knows if it's 2023 or 2024. However, it seems like many persons have made the decision that they are qualified to become Prime Minister of Jamaica. However, the history of politics in Jamaica has indicated that parties suffering from disunity and divisions do not win elections. Many persons should ensure that they follow up on the history of Jamaica's politics and to observe and do their research on the various prime ministers and the state of the political organizations that they would have led to victory at the parliamentary polls. During the JLP's 18 years in the political wilderness, there was a story about a gang of three which emerged in the party as well as a gang of five. There was also an incident when a prominent member of the party suffered serious hurt as members confronted one another over leadership of the party outside of the national arena. Several members of the JLP left the party during the 18 years out of government because of the divisions and disunity. One prominent member who left the party then even broke fingers symbolically to show how much he had divorced himself from the party. He eventually returned to the fold. Daryl Vaz is in the habit of accusing the PNP of being bad mind and grudgeful. Now that the PNP has stolen the playbook for how to lose an election, it seems that they are studying it carefully to keep the party out of power. Vaz can now properly tell off the PNP and odd other words such as thieves. 
Recently, the youngest vice president of the People's National Party, Damian Crawford, has his ambition set on becoming Prime Minister of Jamaica. And of course, maybe many persons in their youthful years view him as a prime candidate. And many have spoken to his leadership skills, his vision, and of course, they have also spoken to his ability to sway a crowd. And they have also mentioned his level of intelligence and strategic thinking. But some say that he tends to speak out of turn. And the recent issues that came out in regards to him making his statements against the current leader of the PNP did not go well for him. However, many see him as the one who will break the JLP's 18-year record in the wilderness. Along with the People's National Party, it makes you wonder if, with the current vice presidents and the current senior members in the party and the way that they have been behaving over the last two years, it makes you wonder if they are working towards ensuring that the Jamaica Labour Party will be winning elections for at least three decades. Of course, the Jamaica Labour Party did not manage to win an election for 18 years, whilst the PNP was being led by PJ Patterson. But of course, maybe many persons view Crawford as the one who can lead the People's National Party into government. And maybe he will manage to break the Jamaica Labour Party's victorious three-decade plan. Well, who knows when that will happen? Maybe we'll have to wait for 30 years or maybe 40 years to get Crawford up to speed. Maybe by the time he gets to age 80 or maybe a little bit older, maybe he will be in the primary position to become Jamaica's next prime minister from the PNP's political organization. Well, like, comment, share and subscribe. Let me know what you think about all of these issues. Will Crawford become Prime Minister of Jamaica by age 80? Thanks.